coming up on DHN. See how coffee may have a positive effect on your health. The LA Clippers have lost investors, fans, and now an owner after racist comments. One fisherman speaks out about his nightmarish experience trying to save passengers on the South Korean ferry Seoul. DHN, where you can get all the news of the day with signing, voices, and captions. The Deaf and Hearing Network starts now. Thanks for choosing us. I'm Melissa Huber. And I'm Clayton Hyde. South Korea's Prime Minister, Chung Hong Won resigned this weekend. It came after the government received much criticism for their slow response to the sinking ferry Seawol. DHN reporter Rhonda Makowichuk has been following the story. South Korea's Prime Minister Chung Hong Won took full responsibility for the delay and apologized to a public audience on Sunday. But the cries from the family members who still not have found their missing keep me from sleeping at night. I bow my head and express my condolences to the victim's portrait of this accident. Over 100 people are still missing and nearly 200 confirmed dead. Most of the passengers were students. I want to express our deepest condolences, uh, our edo, uh, to all the families who lost loved ones on the ferry uh, Sewa. Uh, so many were young students with their entire lives ahead of them. Those remarks came from President Obama during his week-long trip through Asia. Dive teams have been searching the area for more bodies. One cabin that was meant to hold 30 people was crammed with the bodies of 50 girls. The ferry's captain was arrested for negligence and abandoning ship. One man is credited with saving the lives of 25 people on the sinking ferry. Captain Kim Hyun Ho is a fisherman from a small nearby island in South Korea. He drove his boat to the crash site and pulled people on board. He spoke with CNN's Nick Robertson about the rescue. It was hell, agonizing. There were a lot of people and not enough boats, he tells me. People in the water were yelling for help. Hian Ho says he still cannot sleep at night because the accident was so horrifying. Tragedy struck the United States this week when a powerful storm produced multiple tornadoes, causing millions in damage and leaving at least 35 people dead. The main tornado grew to be about a half a mile wide and traveled just outside of Little Rock, Arkansas for about 30 miles. Parts of Alabama, Tennessee, and Mississippi declared a state of emergency because of the destruction. More tornadoes touched down in other parts of the South as well on Tuesday. Foreign diplomats have issued more sanctions against Moscow and Russian officials. But that isn't the only thing people have come to expect. Another government building fell to the control of rebels in Ukraine. The Ukrainian army has failed to stop these uprisings because they are working to protect their borders. If history holds true, neither Ukraine nor Russia will stand down. President Obama is home after a week-long trip through Asia. He made stops in Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, and the Philippines. He is the first president in over 50 years to visit Malaysia. The trip was meant to discuss trade and security, but was overshadowed by talks of the continued battle with Russia and other foreign policies. The search for missing Malaysia Flight 370 is no longer solely supported by the government. Almost $60 million from private contractors will go towards the search. The underwater searches have not been successful so far and will now cover a larger area of the sea bottom floor. The search is expected to take many more months. John Paul II and John XXIII are now saints after Sunday's mass of canonization led by Pope Francis. Both men broke tradition on their path to sainthood. Normally, the process of becoming a saint involves many steps and does not start until at least five years after a candidate has died. John Paul II, however, started only weeks after his passing. One of the biggest requirements is the verification of two miracles, but that rule was waived for John the 23rd. 
the lives of newborn infants diagnosed with jaundice may be changing. All because of three engineering students from Michigan State University. When we went to the hospitals, we kind of noticed that the babies just kind of left sitting there for the most part. And so uh, you can only imagine what the mother would feel like. Senior Vu Huang was one of the students who worked to make a blanket with fiber optic lights that allows mothers to hold their newborns with jaundice. This is a condition that gives newborns yellow skin and eyes. The blanket is called Swaddle Me Billy, and it has already won multiple awards, but it is still a long way from the marketplace. We have some good news for all you coffee lovers. Rana Makowichuk is outside one of our local Starbucks to tell you why. Well, Clayton, coffee may be the key to lowering your risk of type 2 diabetes. A study found that people who upped their coffee intake by a cup a day had an 11% lower risk of type 2 diabetes. Those who drank less coffee increased their risk by 17%. Researchers say that up to six cups a day is associated with lower risk, although they aren't sure exactly why. It's important to note the study did not look at lattes and other specialty drinks like frappuccinos, only the simple eight ounce cup of black coffee with milk and sugar. The study spanned four years and looked at the drinking habits of 120,000 people. One of the world's most famous clowns is sporting a new look. Ronald McDonald is still wearing his traditional red, white, and yellow, but he's now sporting two new looks with cargo pants, a vest, and a red and white striped shirt. He is also making a presence on Twitter with hashtag Ronald McDonald. However, it's not going over quite like corporate planned. Many people are not happy with the changes, and some started using moms not loving it. Let us know what you think by commenting on our Facebook post or on Instagram using hashtag DHN with a thumbs up or thumbs down. One Arizona man was honored for his work with Apache ASL Trails. Eric Schweiker was recognized in the Architectural Accessibility category at the Tempe Mayor's Disability Awards. He says it wouldn't have happened without deaf leaders from the community, and is it is more than just an honor. And this is just one more sign that the city of Tempe it really wants to help the deaf community win this battle. The facility is specialized for deaf residents, but was nearly shut down by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Schwenker was key in keeping AAT open, and residents are overjoyed they are allowed to continue living in their homes. Eric helped make our lives a lot better at AAT. It was really a moment of deaf empowerment. Schwenker believes this win with HUD and the award from Tempe will inspire other communities to create similar housing. President Obama spoke from the Philippines about the secret waiting list at the Phoenix Veteran Affairs Hospital. So we take uh, the allegations very seriously. Um, that is consistent with what has been my rock solid commitment uh, to make sure that our veterans are cared for. CNN reported the Valley Hospital created this to avoid reporting delays. Almost 1,500 vets were kept waiting and some died before getting treatment. The medical center's director was reportedly given a bonus to keep quiet. A New York congressman resigned last Monday after pleading not guilty to numerous federal charges. Congressman Michael Grimm was charged with fraud, filing false tax returns, and perjury. The criminal charges came after a two-year-long FBI investigation. You might remember Congressman Grimm from earlier this year when he threatened to throw a reporter over the Capitol Hill balcony. We wanted to update you on the scandal with Clippers owner Donald Sterling. The NBA investigation revealed the TMZ recording last week was indeed Sterling's voice saying the racist comments. They announced Tuesday Sterling is banned from basketball for life and will be heavily fined. I am also finding Mr. Sterling 
$2.5 million, the maximum amount allowed under the NBA Constitution. The money will be donated to an anti-discrimination foundation. The NAACP said they will not honor Sterling with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Kia, Virgin American, and other investors have announced they are severing ties with the team. The recording showed Sterling arguing with his girlfriend about her public association with African Americans. Some reports have said Irvin Magic Johnson may be interested in buying the Clippers, but he tweeted Monday they were not true. Swimmers competed in Mesa this weekend for the Arena Grand Prix. Phelps fell short in his competition. He did not make it to the finals in the 50 free and lost to Lochte in the 100-meter butterfly. Phelps said the race was a good practice but has made no commitments to competing in the 2016 Olympics. He did, however, sign up for the Charlotte Grand Prix in mid-May. Phelps wasn't the only one who didn't do as well as expected. Marcus Titus competed in the 50 free, 100 meter, and 200 meter breaststroke. He placed in the low 20s and high 30s in each event. One of the events needed to be redone due to errors. You can see in the footage that swimmers are stopping at different spots in the course because of unclear signaling. Titus says by the time they redid the event, he was worn out. He competed in the 2012 Olympic trials and coached the 2013 Deaf Olympic swim team. He plans on competing for the 2016 Olympic team and the 2017 Deaf Olympics team. His next meet is in June. The 10th annual Pat Tillman Run finished Saturday in Tempe right here at ASU. More than 30,000 runners participated. Tillman played for the Arizona Cardinals but put his NFL career on hold to join the Army shortly after 9-11. The event raises money for a scholarship fund for veterans. The run is 4.2 miles long because he wore the number 42 on his jersey when he played for the Sun Devils. A lot of people came to the Pat Tillman race. Yeah, they always seem to sell out really fast. A ton of people go. I didn't sign up this year, but I'd like to one of these days. Next year? Yeah, and I'll sign up early. Yeah, do it. All right, thanks for watching. See you in two weeks on the next episode of DHN.